Hi everyone, I'm back again. Let's try that take two. Um, I've said it before, you've got to love live television. It's Mel from My Paper Oasis. I am back again tonight. I've recovered. I've had lots of cups of tea after On Stage Live last week. And I'm back into the swing for this week. I'm pretty excited. We've had things like my um, pre-purchase um, product has come from On Stage for some of the stuff that um, we got from On Stage. So after we've done a few more Christmas things, you know, we'll um, get around to uh, showing you some sneak peeks for that as well. Um, so this week, what I said I would show you is what I did for my Rooney gifts um, for On Stage. So when we go to On Stage, the big conference where all our Stamping Up demonstrators get together and see all the new catalogues, um, we give each other what we call a pillow gift or a Rooney gift. Um, and it doesn't have to be anything super huge, but we like to just, you know, give something to each other. So um, this year, being, you know, um, the people that I had the room with, you know, it's been a bit of a stressful year for some of us. We've had a pretty eventful year. So I just wanted to make something um, that, or give them something that was about, you know, relaxing. It's time to relax, wind down, the end of the year's coming, um, time to take a break, all those kinds of things. Hi, Michelle. Hi, Megan. So nice to see you've joined me. Um, so what I did was this uh, little box. Now, I didn't use this particular designer series paper um, for these. I had ones that had a bit more of a subtler pattern on them um, than the clouds. So this one's used for your kind of demonstration. And this paper is retired. But the reason I used this paper was um, because it's a stronger kind of cardboard. Um, this one obviously has clouds on it, but these are just gorgeous little boxes that you can make using a gift box punch board. So we showed the gift bag punch board the other week and showed you how you can make different size bags. The same goes for the gift box punch board. So all I did was make a little box. I made a little belly band to go around and tied it with some ribbon um, using our scallop tag topper at the top. So what was inside was, when we open this up, so these boxes, you can create a little tab so that they stick together if you like. Now, let's see if I can undo this around the camera. Yes. See, can you see the little hooks in there? So you can create little hooks. So if you just want to decorate the top, you can. You don't necessarily need the hooks with a belly band. So inside, what was in there was a little bath bomb from Lush. So this one's called a Dragon's Edge Bath Bomb. And um, I keep it in the bag so that, you know, if the girls really like it and want another one, they can go back and get another one so they know what they're doing. So these are gorgeous. This is the bath bomb for this. And I wish we had smelly vision because you should smell this thing. It is so um, bright and funky, the dragon eggs one. It's like it's a real invigorating kind of smell. So that's what I got the girls so that they could go home and have a relax and, you know, get ready for, you know, next year um, when they're ready. So dragon eggs bath bomb is that one. So the way I designed the box was I squashed this up and I basically just got a ruler and measured um, what kind of size I would need. So from that, I knew that I would need this size box and see, nice pretty inside as well. So I'm going to set that aside and we're going to use a completely different paper tonight to make this and the paper that we're using tonight is actually um, available now. So I'll show you what we did. So by measuring, this is our gift box punch board. So same as all our punch boards, it has a little scoring tool already in. The instructions for what to do are always written here and your measurements are always written here. So this one has an inches chart and a centimetres chart and for all of you, you guys all know that I pretty much like my inches chart. So I knew from my egg size I needed about um, a three and a quarter inch box and it has measurements here for a three and a quarter inch box right at this line here. So what it tells you is it tells you your paper size that you're going to need. So for mine, I needed a 10 by 10 inch piece of paper and on the start line I need to be on large and on my diagonal line I need to be on large so your start line is here and it tells you that that's the start line so I don't know if you can read that there but that says start line and your diagonal line is here it says diagonal so we know we need to be on the L for large so we're going to create this um, outline for this box now this might be a little bit tricky to do here now, the good thing about the box punch board as well is it has this flip out because you're going to be using quite big um, designer series paper generally. You need that extra length at this end. So that bit might kind of flip off camera a bit. I'm sorry if it does that. Hi to all those other people who've just joined. Nice to see you. Okay, 
So what we're using for this one is we are going to use our Irresistibly Floral Designer Series paper. So this Designer Series paper you can see has kind of got an embossed look to it and there's lots of different patterns you can get. Um, I've chosen the stripe one for this, but this is really good because you can ink over it or sponge over it and then wipe it off again. And these bits that are embossed will still maintain um, that white sheen so it can be kind of coloured in between if you really want to. I'm just going to keep it white for tonight and I've already kind of started what we needed to do just to save time for the video. So remember I said I needed a 3.25 inch box so I need it to be 10 inches um, square was my measurements, 10 inches square. So that's what I've started with. Now you can just ignore the bits that I've already done that's just to make it quicker for tonight. So I hope the glare doesn't get too much. When you're lining it up here you've got your um, lining like the plate that you need to line it up against the top here so remember our start line was large so that's what we're going to pop this one into up to the L so you can see I'm just at the large line here it's a punch board the last punch board you remember you always need to punch first so punching and then getting our scoring tool and we're going to score so we're going to score down on this one right across on this top line and then remember this one was large as well, our diagonal one was large. Always pay attention to that because sometimes it does change with your boxes. And you'll see when you score on the large, if you can see that line and this line, it comes to the point in here, okay? And then for the boxes, all you do is you turn your cardstock around and you do it again. And you do that all the way around the box. So you bounce again, oh sorry, move the camera there, go across, going down, we're on that large line again, and down on the large line here for the diagonal. So that, I then you continue around. So you do it around this side, and then one more around this side. And then what the, you'll see is you've got your four little notches and all your score lines, if you can see that. So with the gift box punch board, the, the instructions then tell you what you need to do is actually turn your cardstock over, so turn it to the back, and you need to line it up again on each of those start lines, so large, and you punch again. You don't need to score this time, but you just need to punch. So you're turning it round on each of those marks, just to the large again, each of the four sides, and punching. And that's it. So we can move our punch board out the way. So now what you're left with is this box um, your designer series paper that is scored and ready to fold. So like anything when we make score lines we have to fold on them. So let's fold and burnish. Boxes especially are really good and really important to kind of give a burnish mark. So burnish means you're just going to rub over that edge and make that fold really secure. Sorry my paper keeps moving, I've got a sticky spot. So folding and scoring, sorry burnishing, and burnishing and it might look kind of difficult initially but once you've you know done a box or two it's really simple to get the hang off and it's great for packaging ideas especially coming up to Christmas and teachers presents now you might know that there's also note that there's all this, this um, score line in here as well the easiest way to fold this is I just bend it over so you can see this score line and then bend it back down on top of itself and you can see how the box is going to be made just from doing that so go around fold it over flat and pull it across towards you and down it goes turning around again fold it over and fold it towards you and then fold it over and fold it towards you now if you really wanted to you can just kind of create your box like that you don't really have to do anything else with it you know if you're going to put a belly band and you just want it to fall open I actually like to seal mine shut so the easiest way I've found to do that with these is you know I like my fast fuse I think it's great for boxes is I turn it this way so I turn it back onto its side and you know those points that we just folded on one of each of those all the way around the box you're going to apply some adhesive so all I'm going to do is just run a couple of strips of adhesive down one of those points on each side so just like this all the way around the box and we go on all four sides done and then to create the box I turn it over and I'm, it's okay it doesn't really generally stick down because your points are onto your paper because your points are up so again what we did before we're just going to fold the corner over 
and fold this bit over and then it's stuck. So while it's like that, I know it's going to be a bit hard for you to see, I like to stick this piece down inside. You can see there's a flap. So you don't have to stick this down at all, but I like to adhere it to the inside of the box. So all I do then is run a piece of tape like that and fold it up and stick it. And your side's done at the same time. It does get trickier doing this bit as you go around and you'll see that in a minute. Well, I've been saying that it doesn't stick. I've got to tell you that literally is the first time one of my boxes has ever stuck to my paper. So round we go again, folding and sticking. And again, I'm going to do the inside, which you're not necessarily... Oh my gosh, it's just doing it to me all day today, isn't it? I love live TV. I'm going to move that for a moment. So I'm going to do the inside of this one again, which you're going to find really tricky to see now. So you're just going to have to trust me that I'm popping my tape in and getting that little bit there. And again, fold it down towards you and over. Getting into that box again. You can see it's getting trickier now. And the last corner, you kind of have to turn your box a bit for this one. And you can see there's your joins. So you can just actually get that one and bend it and stick it together like that. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Michelle. I know I've done a few of these though now, so it is easier to make it look simple. Okay, so then what you're going to do again is that last piece, I'm just going to pop some adhesive inside. Oh, I have Audrey from Scotland. Hi, Audrey. How are you going? Audrey is um, my hubby's cousin. She's going to come out and visit again this year. Now, the one thing you can do with these boxes is you can either fold the lids in, you can keep them up, so you can fold them in and keep them open, keep them up, or you can make it a bit like a noodle box and decorate it and fold it out this way as well, especially if you've got designer series paper that has a different colour here. It looks really, really pretty. So what you're going to, that's your box done pretty much, okay? Now, I'm not going to actually do the little tabs on this box to join them, but if you are going to, you bring back your gift box punch board and you can see there's indents on this side as well and that's so that you can actually make sure you've got the right side facing when you do this you can actually pop the corner of your box into there and punch and it will give you this little notch here and then when you turn your box this side and do this one it punches it the opposite way so that you can um, close that join and lock them in together like that okay so for this one we're going to leave it I'm just going to leave it so it just kind of closes shut because we're going to make a little belly band to go around it. Now remember I'll put all these measurements on my blog. So for this size box, what you need is um, we're going to create this belly band. Okay. So for my size box, the 3.25 um, centimetre box or three and a quarter inches. Okay. You need two pieces of designer series paper, whatever you choose. Um, and I've cut this at one and three quarters here this way by seven inches this way. Okay. Now what you need to do for this is because one whole 12 inch piece will not wrap the entire way around this box, you need two pieces. So make sure you cut two of these and then follow these directions for both. You are going to score one end at half an inch. Now I'm using my cutting um, tool because it also has our scoring blade up here as well. You can use a scoring tool if you like. Oh, I've had a few more people join. Hi. Um, okay, so you're just going to score it half an inch here. And then you're going to move it along and you're going to score it two and a quarter inches. And then you're going to move it along again and score it five and a half inches. Okay, remember I said you need to do that twice. This paper is very pretty, Michelle. This paper is from our Blooms and Bliss Designer Series paper. Of course, it's got the other pretty side as well, so you can choose whatever side um, you like. So what you're going to do is just fold in the same direction on all of those score lines. And this tab up here that had the five and a half inch score mark, so not the part with the half inch. Whoops. Oh, my gosh. Sorry, everyone. <laughs> you're going to punch using our scallop tag topper punch. Now I know this isn't two inches, it's a little bit shorter, but that's okay. So if you line it up in the middle, it will still work. Okay, so you're going to line it up in there evenly spaced and you're just going to punch down and you get that beautiful tag top up. So using that, 
for those of you who are quilters, you're going to understand what I mean here. You've got two pieces that have their half inch score marks down here. You're going to run adhesive along one piece. Okay. And then you're going to do a right sides together kind of fold. So your two half inch pieces together, right sides together, and you're going to join them. Oops, sorry guys. It's a bit hard to see around this camera sometimes. So you're going to join them like so. So you end up with one long piece, but the ugly fold is underneath. So that's going to sit underneath your box. You're not going to see it. So you bring your box in, you pop your belly band around and you've scored it so it lands on the score marks. You can see the scores line up fairly nicely with your edges. And then you're just going to cut a piece of ribbon to pop inside. Okay, so for those of you who are centimetre people, this is about a 40 centimetre piece of ribbon. I'm using the um, Sweet Sugar Plum ribbon and we're just going to thread it through. The Scallop Tag Topper Punch is great for belly bands as well as tags, as well as tags that you can put on cards. It is really versatile. So because you're making a belly band, you don't actually have to seal the box because that's what the belly band is going to do for you. So there you go. One very pretty box, all made, that you can use to put a gift in. Now remember you can do this with Christmas paper or any paper that you choose and you can make whatever gift that you want to go in it. So that's that box done and you can also, you know, add a little tag. So this tag is, oh look at this, look, look, it's my brand new stitched by the heart framelits. Look at that. Stitch from the heart, that's what it's called. Look at it. <gasps> Isn't it pretty? And I've just teamed that um, with our layering ovals um, framelits as well. So go ahead and tear it open and you can just thread that through. I'm just using some of our silver metallic thread. So you can just, you know, thread that through um, and tie off around your ribbon. So it sits like that and your box is complete. So that's it guys. I absolutely hope you loved that box. I've clearly missed a lot of your comments. I can see Michelle and Megan talking about how easy it's going to be to make this. Hi Mel, how are you going? Nice to see you. Um, I've got lots of you joining tonight. It's lovely to have you along. I really hope you found that super easy to use. If you have a gift box punch board and haven't used it, I encourage you to pull it out. It's great for gift giving. Um, if you don't have one, I encourage you to get one because it solves all your packaging needs. Um, the biggest size box that you can make is a 4x4 four four box um, according to the measurements on the gift box punch board and that is with a 12x12 12 12 piece of paper which is pretty much the largest kind of paper that you can get. Um, I hope you really enjoyed that. Yes, hi Simone. Yes, I absolutely love those new framelits as well. They add such a pretty touch to the cards. They're just gorgeous. I can't wait to have a bit more of a play with them. Have a really good night, people. Remember all the measurements. I'll pop up on my blog um, on Tuesday. And take care. I'll see you soon. Bye.